Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Wednesday and uh, we got a task uh, that we have ahead of us today. We're going to try and put in a permanent flag. Now you remember a couple weeks ago I put in a temporary flag pole and that was just to uh, make sure of where I wanted it and, and the alignment and things like that. So now we're ready to put in a permanent one. Let's go dig out the old one. Now a quick disclaimer before we start the video. You're going to hear me say cement a lot of times instead of concrete okay it's a New York thing okay so whenever I say cement I mean concrete cement is an ingredient that uh, you mix with sand and that makes concrete so uh, that's my New York thing so let's now, get here started. was the temporary flagpole sleeve that I the reason I did this was to uh, see if it was where I wanted the flag to be and uh, I wanted to see how high I wanted the flag to be. you know it's always good to put a temporary because once it's cemented in you really can't make a decision so and the other thing was I used my telescopic flag pole to, uh, to determine how I liked it, but I did want to put a, a stationary, a flag pole, much like my neighbors, out of now solid This served its purpose. What we're going to do is we're going to dig it out, and we're going to insert a permanent sleeve. And you can see here, it's got to go below the frost line. We're going to put some gravel, cement, and I'll show you what we're going to do. Now the three or two or three important things you need when you're digging a hole, especially if you're in my kind of soil, a lot of rock, a lot of clay, a lot of roots. First thing is you need a long pry bar, which is nothing more than like a one inch piece of steel with a lip at the end. And you get down there and you could break up the soil. Um, I like this particular one. This is called the mutt. You see this? It's called the mutt. It's a really nice tool. It has a blade on the end, heavy duty. What you do is you uh, go down here, you dig it up. Now, once you get below two feet or so, the soil isn't as compact and hard. You would think it'd be the opposite, but it's not. The soil actually gets easier to break up the deeper you go. Um, now, you see what I'm doing? I'm twisting, pressing, twist, breaking up the soil. And then you use your post hole digger. And the only thing the post hole dig is for is to remove the soil you see you take the soil and that's where it pays to have some kind of tarp or something to catch the soil otherwise it's going to be all over your below lawn. two feet as we are here we're just below three feet you don't have to make the hole as wide at the bottom because that's just to lock it in below the frost line so it doesn't have to be as wide as it is okay at the there you see where that's a four foot pipe and uh, we want it just a little above ground. You step back, and I'll show you. As what you can see, like. we are just a little above ground where we want to be. Might go down another inch or so, but uh, you can see the soil that came out of there. Now, it's much easier to widen a hole than it is to dig it deep. So we're going to widen it a little bit more at the top, you know. And uh, but the deep, the depth is we got set because that's like I said with the frost line. It's going to go below the frost line for drainage. We're going to put gravel in first, then some. Now you can see here, uh, what we did was, uh, there's a little post that I drilled through here. It's locked in, a little shaft, and that's uh, just about two feet below. And that's so that the, the, flags, the flag pole has a place to stop when it goes down. That'll be filled up with gravel underneath for drainage, the whole thing, and then cement all around. So. Uh, now what we have to do is get the hole to the right dimension that we feel like we want it Pour in gravel set the post and then uh, yeah, we're at our required depth and uh, and width and, and another thing is you got to remember something I have very extremely dense clay soil with a lot of rocks and roots You don't have to I have five times the diameter. You don't have to go too much I could have done a little less But if you have sandy soft soil where it's real easy to dig that hole this hole took me over an hour to dig if you have a you know sandy soft soil that you don't have a, to have to use a pick, you could just use a post hole digger. You're going to have to put in more cement, you know, if you want that wind load rating. So let's uh, fill in the gravel and then uh, get ready. Now, with just the cement. a quick word about pouring dry cement in a hole compared to mixing it first. You always better mixing it up first. You get a much better mix, much okay, stronger. There's the initial pour. We're going to let that set up. Then we'll brush it around the bottom a little bit. 
and uh, we're gonna probably put a, a gravel footing around or whatever later okay, on. Okay, here we are. It's been uh, three days. The concrete is fully cured, and uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the pole, and uh, hopefully we'll get this done okay, by now today. When I said permanent, this is uh, what I mean by permanent is that this is meant to stay in there for you know years, and unless you have to take it out, and then you can take it out. And the way you do that is you put in a sleeve that's just a little bit bigger than the uh the flagpole itself and now we're going to make up some wedges we're going to get this nice and uh, level and straight and then we're going to pour in sand and when we pour the sand in that's going to lock this in and uh and then bob's your own okay, we use three inch pvc to uh, make the sleeve we got a three inch cap we got to cut a little hole in here so that the bottom uh flag pole a section could fit in there and that is a two inch galvanized pipe now two inch galvanized pipe is has a, a width on the outside of just under two and a half inches as you could see so we're going to have to cut that hole we don't want it to be too tight because we are going to put sealant around there just to keep the water out but uh we got to cut this now to now, that side. ideally it'd be nice if we had a big chuck we could put this in there but we don't so what we're going to do is we're going to put this on the outside of the jaws and when we open up the jaws that'll hold that steady for our okay, so you can see we marked off the hole now I, I need it bigger than than you see we just want a little bigger we're going to put sealant in there and stuff and now this is the setup i have i'm just going to run this tool right into here as this spins you'll see what it looks like Okay, here we go. We just wanted this about, we want about a quarter of an inch on each, all the way around the pipe to, uh, so that we can add caulking and things like that. We don't want the pipe resting on this cap because, the, you know, we do have a couple inches sticking out of the ground. So uh, this is uh, just what we want now. We'll fill the hole with the uh, sand. This is just a collar so that we could caulk okay, I think around. you might appreciate this setup here. You can see we're using that uh, jaw for the workhorse here. And uh, what we're going to do... We have the uh, chain vise up here, the 100 year old pipe vise, and I uh, have that portable, but it's all clamped on there. This is solid as a rock. Now we're going to use a wire brush, clean that up, and then put the adapt, the uh, reducer on. We're going to use some vintage, got to be 50 years old. This is my dad's Rector seal, and uh, slow dry, soft set, and you can see it's a pipe threading content. We're just using this so that no water gets down into the uh, the threads but really it doesn't have to be really watertight then we're going to seal it up anyway now when applying the rector seal you put on the inside the female coupling so it don't ooze out and uh, you just place this on here first because this one here and this is a tapered thread so you'll see it, it will tighten up on its own and then we'll just give it a little crank it's already it's got a good this set. is where your nice aluminum pipe wrench comes in you don't have to think and we don't have to crank down too hard but we got to make sure it's tight because this will be supporting the load so we'll just bring this around like this until it sets up that pipe dope acts as a good lubricant to help set these threads and you can see it really helps having this chain vise to hold the pipe and again we have a tremendous amount of pressure uh, of leverage on that wrench so you don't want to go nuts and damage, you know, and, and compress okay, the now pipe. I bought a kit on um, on Amazon that includes the uh, topper. Instead of putting an eye bolt in there, this looks much more professional. Comes with a nylon pulley. This fits over the top. I, I use some, and Dave turned me on to this, cold galvanizing compound. He said this stuff is fantastic. He sprayed all the stuff that he cut on the fence before he put the silver paint on afterwards so that, uh, it really protects it so we're going to put this on top here we're going to thread uh i got some thread lock uh, loctite we're going to loctite these down and uh the top will be taken care of then we'll wipe down the whole pole okay, here's where an extra set of hands would have really come in handy but as you can see now we have the uh we did the coupling also i i primed it now anywhere around the threads that's going to be a rust area the threads because that's cut into steel so uh, you could see here we have the tap. Now we're gonna put the ball on, but I'm just gonna wipe everything down with acetone, get rid of some of this sticky material where the labels were, and uh, run the rope and then set the Special shout out to my buddies in India who are still making pipe and things like that. That's what you're finding over here. 
you can see here and to take that off just a little acetone takes that right off okay here we are we put the initial pole in looking good now you see we put wedges around here and this is the way you do it with the uh, flag poles because you can always take it out by uh, by flooding the sand with water and then pulling it out so right now what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, shim it up to it's perfectly level and then we're gonna put sand around the edges tamper it down and that'll hold it steady rock solid. We'll try and get this steady on two different sides and then okay now you see why we did that collar a little bit oversized you see that now we have the sand tamped, we uh, tampered the sand into the sleeve, then we put the collar over, put more sand in. Now we're going to caulk over it and you can see we double checked it, everything's straight and level. Looks great. Here we go. A rock solid, beautiful flagpole and uh, done just like my neighbor did. And uh, we're going to tamper it down a little bit more, but it is level and we want to make sure we're going to let it settle for a couple days before we put the caulking Last up, I drilled and tapped two holes here, uh, quarter by 20, because I have some stainless hardware. And I want to put a regular cleat on. They gave a cleat, a different cleat, which I wasn't crazy I like about. these much better, and I'll show you why. There are so many ways that you can do this. You can wrap it around, twist it here, wrap it around itself and bring it down like this and lock it in and uh, and then you can repeat it again but uh, what's nice about having the standoff cleat is uh, you could pass it through like this here and then wrap it around like this and you got an instant lock like that you know and then you can continue with your uh, with tightening up you know to, that's a real secure line you get a really secure lock up because you could pass it through the cleat instead of just around so in closing I would like you all to uh, join me by uh, you have about 10 days to the 4th of July let's see if you can't get a flag up outside your house it doesn't have to be a pole it can be anything you just uh, hang it off and you can get them real cheap now if you go on Amazon you get a flag as little as five dollars so Let's see if you can get one hanging out there. Show your patriotism. That goes for all over the world, wherever you are. Just fly the flag of your country and be proud of it. Thanks so much for tuning in. Take care now. Bye-bye.